the Iran-US crisis could play out. Rami Khoury from the American University in Beirut joins us now live. Thank you for your time. And we just heard there one person describe Iran's retaliation as merely just a slap on the wrist. Uh, the US intelligence also said that Iran purposely downplayed their retaliation. Would you agree with that analysis? I think that's probably correct. Uh, I would also say that this is the first step in what is likely to be a series of Iranian actions in, in very different fields. Could be military, could be economic, could be uh, um, asymmetrical warfare, and it could be done by the Iranian government, could be done by friends and allies and proxies of Iran around the region. Uh, so this is unlikely to be the end of the story, but it clearly uh, tones down the immediate concerns by many people, especially here in the Middle East, that there's going to be a war, and uh, that's a good thing uh, for everybody. But the fundamental conflict uh, is only getting more intense, not less intense. Yeah, this is after 40 years of ramping up escalation in tensions between the two countries. What we have seen, as you just say, is a dramatic de-escalation. But we heard the words from the US President Donald Trump to say that, at least from their side, politically, this is certainly not over. So how do you think it's going to play out? Well, my guess is that there's going to be action on two fronts. You're going to have continued public uh, activity, whether it's on social media, political statements, UN uh, Security Council moves, or even uh, strikes by various groups uh, uh, in the region against each other, uh, friends of America, friends of Iran. Uh, that will happen. And at the same time, I think you will see, which has already started, behind-the-scenes mediation to try to address the fundamental political differences that uh, exist and that most people believe, including myself, can be resolved through diplomacy. The, uh, the, the agreement uh, in 2015 on uh, sanctions and Iran's nuclear industry was a great example of how uh, the U.S. and other Western and the P5 plus one countries, not just Western, but also Russia and others, how they could uh, negotiate with Iran and reach an agreement that was satisfactory to everybody and in compliance with international law. So mediators are going to work overtime now to try to get both sides back on this track. Which will be particularly difficult because Iran said yesterday that they won't, they won't be negotiating. Well, people say a lot of things in the heat of battle and um, a lot of the things that uh, Donald Trump said were either incoherent or untrue and some of them were actually quite accurate. So I wouldn't uh, put a lot of credence in what people just make uh, statements because uh, they're usually playing to their domestic audiences. The reality is that Iran desperately wants to end the sanctions uh, and get back to its national development process and play its normal role in the region, which is a big, important power that wants to live peacefully with, with its neighbors. The Saudis, interestingly enough, have started uh, moving in this direction by making noises about calming things down and uh, sending signals that it wants to have talks uh, with the Iranians. So I think the statements that people make shouldn't uh, be taken at face value, but more importantly, watch what people do. So you're saying they may very well be open to negotiation. They've definitely held off on military action, held off on firing for the moment. But should the U.S. be wary, though, of Iranian proxies acting independently? For sure. I wouldn't necessarily call them proxies. I think they're allies, they're partners, they're people who are very, very close to Iran and don't necessarily only take orders from Iran. Some of them do. Some of the militias in, uh, in Iraq and other places. But others like Hezbollah, or Hamas, or the Ansar Allah, the Houthi movement in Yemen. These are uh, locally, nation, nationally based uh, resistance movements that uh, follow their own uh, priorities and strategies in their own countries, but they're very, very close to uh, Iran. So I think we will see in Iraq mostly uh, some more anti-American action, military action, uh, and um, other moves. So uh, yes, there will be more attacks against American military uh, installations, for sure. And this has been clearly stated now by people like the leader of, of Hezbollah, uh, Hassan Nasrallah and others, that the aim now is to get the American armed forces out of the Middle East. They're not going to be able to achieve that, for sure. But this is clearly the direction that they want to go in, which will see some military action and probably uh, parallel diplomatic moves. Rami Curry, thank you for giving us your analysis, speaking to us live from Beirut.